Hi there, this is Fianna Adora. I've been a resident of Second Life since October 2006, operating there with my brand Enchant 3D. You can learn more about me at Enchant3D.com. I'm also a student and volunteer at the Ditko University, where they offer live in-world classes on content creation for Second Life. The instruction there is really great, and I do recommend that you check out their website online and join the Ditko University group in World for updates and class schedules. Now what I'm bringing you today is part two in my Tries to Quads Marvelous Designers ZBrush Blender workflow. Although this one uh, will mostly focus on ZBrush, um, if you haven't watched the first video, uh, I recommend that you do. Uh, we'll be using the same model we created in that video and um, some of the problems um, relate to how we did things. Um, so it'll be really handy if you want to follow along. Um, so here you can see we have our uh, Zen Remesh skirt um, that we brought into Blender. Um, you know, uh, although I was really happy with the amount of time it took um, to create it in Marvelous Designer, um, bring it through ZBrush and into Blender was about 15 minutes. Um, you know, there were some problems with the mesh when I, you know, went to work on it. So um, one of the first things, just the geometry that was generated, um, you know, you can look at the top part here and it's, you know, he's got some really inconsistent geometry, uh, different quad shapes and stuff. Um, if I was just, you know, tiling a texture on here, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, but if I wanted to, you know, put some stitching detail in here um, or band detail or, you know, some kind of belt, um, you know, you would definitely run into some problems with distortion um, when, you know, trying to paint on your UV map. Um, the uh, second problem is it's just basically the, the number of faces that were generated. Um, 1,500 faces is actually pretty high. Um, I mean, not terribly high, but uh, you know, I, I like to be bad and use the solidify modifier to fully line my garments a lot of the time. Um, so I'm looking at an automatic double of them. That's, you know, 3,000 faces. Um, you know, our whole avatar is, you know, 10,000 faces. and. Uh, uh, you know, when you're adding on a skirt and shoes and hat and hair and jacket and accessories, you know, uh, you're, you know, you're generating quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of faces for the viewer to handle. And if you're alone in your skybox, you know, taking high resolution photos of yourself, you know, it's really amazing. But um, when you go to a sim where there are, you know, 40 other people and they're all in their, you know, 200,000 face getups, um, you know, that's when things really start to lag out. Um, so, you know, I kind of make it uh, my policy. Um, to try and generate things that are as low poly as possible um, so that, you know, they'll, they'll work really well in Second Life, you know, and we can all enjoy each other and our outfits and, you know, just try and do things with texture and stuff to really bump it up and uh, to make it a little bit better. Um, so uh, for this poly count, there's actually a reason and one of the things that we did in the workflow um, in the first video that uh, caused the poly count to be this high and kind of locked me into that. Um, and I'm going to show you what that is. So we're going to pop over to ZBrush and take a look at that now. Okay, so now we're in ZBrush. I'm going to go up to Import, and I'm going to browse to where I had saved the skirt.obj when we exported it out of Marvelous Designer. I'm going to press Open. It's going to show up as my default tool. Tool. I'm going to click and drag out into the canvas area. Press the Edit button, and then the Polyframe button, and then I'm going to press Frame and Scale. I'm going to go to the Polygroups menu. I'm going to choose Auto Groups with UV, just like we did in the first tutorial. And uh, then we're going to go to the geometry menu and open up our Z Remesher panel. Now, the first time that we went through this, what we did was we hit this freeze groups border button um, before we did the remesh process. And the reason why I did this was to keep the polygroups so that we could use them later when we uh, UV unwrap the mesh in Z Brush. The problem with turning this button on is actually that what it does is it actually freezes all the points, all the vertices at the edges of each of the group panels, um, which basically meant that when Z Remesher was creating new topology for it, it had these fixed points that it had to work with. Um, and really, it ended up limiting um, what it could do with the mesh. Um, if we were to connect all the points going vertically with all the points going horizontally in a grid fashion across the different panels, um, basically you would realize that there was a a minimum number of faces that would always be created um, just, just based on connecting, uh, you know, uh, across from each of the frozen points at the sides of the groups. Um, so ideally what we'd actually like to do is not use the, um, the freeze group border at all. Um, unfortunately, the bad part about that is that 
in not using it, we lose that UV groups option um, or the polygroups option um, when unwrapping. Um, however, I think that the resulting mesh that we get by not using the freeze groups border actually um, works out better for us in the end. Um, we can use the polygroups though um, with another tool. Um, the uh, in the when we did the zebra meshing process the first time we talked about the curve strength and I talked about how um, curve strength uh, determined how closely um, that remesh would follow the curves of your uh, of your uh, garment. Um, that is true however this curve strength also works with another tool um, from the brush menu and if we go to brush and choose Z Remesher Guides. Um, what this brush is, it's a guide brush. So what it does is it helps Z Remesher um, guide the topology that it creates um, by following these guides that we can draw on there. And if I rotate, you can see how closely it hugs the mesh. So um, when I press Z Remesher with this line here, um, it would try to arrange the topology so that it followed this line, which would create kind of a sweeping uh, row of topology here. Now, you could take the time and hand draw all the topology and how you want the flow to go all across the gar garment, um, but really all I'm really concerned with is that is the seams, is like how the UV map comes together. Um, so there's a short that cut that we can use um, involving, involving polygroups and the Z Remesher guides that I'll show you now. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo to remove that guide, and I'm going to go up to the Stroke menu. I'm going to choose Curve Functions, and you'll see here the Frame Mesh button actually says Frame Mesh Border with Curves, um, and there's this Poly Group button or poly, poly Group button which is activated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Frame Mesh button, and what it did was it took my Z Remesher Guides brush and it traced the outline perfectly around the four panels um, from our uh, Poly Groups. So I'm going to frame this again and scale. So now uh, we've got um, our curve strength. Really we want our curves, we want it to 100%, we want it to follow these curves. So I'm going to change this curve strength up to 100. Now adaptive size, we could leave it at 50. Um, personally I find that when I'm working with uh, seamless textures in, in um, uh, with 3D modeling and, and UV maps, I find that I like when my models have got a consistent um, uh, or an average size of the polygons within the UV. I just find that if things are very even, the texturing seems to go a little bit better. So I'm going to reduce it down to zero so that my polygons stay as square as possible. I'm going to change the polygon count down to one. Uh, and this is because I'm going to target about the same amount of polygons that we had previously um, in the first uh, the first time we remeshed this, um, which was coming out at about 1500. So I'm going to lower it a little bit down to about a thousand, and uh, we'll see what comes out. So I'm going to press the set remesher button, and if we take a look, it's at 982 polys and 937 polys with 982 points. If I rotate the mesh around you'll see that it is fairly similar to the mesh we created previously except that the geometry is much more cleaner. Now if I wanted to add stitching I just really have to follow this guideline uh, in the UV map. Um, everything is made up of nice little squares. It, it is really very similar but the geometry is going to be much better to work with, much better to rig. Now we have the unfortunate part that we um, weren't able to uh, you know use the UV groups to generate the UV map like we did in the first video, but really if I look at the side of this garment here I've got nice smooth clean lines that I can use to mark seams in Blender and uh, they should, they look like they're pretty balanced on both sides so they should match up pretty evenly. So I'm going to export this as it is and I'm going to save it as skirt underscore remeshed low poly. Okay, so now uh, before we leave ZBrush and go into Blender, I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm going to control Z, oops, control Z to return back to here. And instead of, um, let's say that I, I want to do better than a thousand, I, I really want to do the skirt in. Uh, you know, 500, 500 polys. So if one is a thousand, we know that 500 polys is going to be about 0.5. So I'm going to change this to 0.5 and I'm going to press the Z Remesher button again. And here we have another version of the skirt that it has even less geometry. Now, you know, it does look a little blocky and, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, but it, it still holds the basic form of the dress still has most of the things that we're looking for. 
if we hit this divide button in the geometry, this works similar to the subdivision level or the um, or the multi-resolution uh, modifiers in Blender. I'm going to press it a couple times. So even then, you can see that you know with it, um, we'll turn polyframe off. With the subdivisions bumped up, you know you you will be able to bump them up in order to bake in textures um, that are much more detailed than the original mesh. And then when you uh, you know when you apply them to the mesh with the lower resolution, once it has smooth turned on, um, it really should be fairly seamless. Um, obviously, you lose a bit of the detail in the ruffle, but uh, if you wanted to start with a really low polygon version of this of the item and, and kind of build it up that way, um, you definitely can go down into the points um, for this and find a good uh, number for you to start to work with. Okay, so now we're in Blender. I'm in Front Ortho View and I've got my Avastar character loaded. I'm going to go to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. I'm going to choose the skirt underscore remeshed low poly that I'd exported from ZBrush earlier. You can see my model imported fitted pretty well to the Second Life avatar. I'm going to click the uh, model to select it. I'm going to turn on Smooth Shading. And as you can see, it is not that different. Um, in this mode than the skirt we'd um, uh, looked at at the beginning. Except when it comes to the geometry, which as we saw earlier is much cleaner. So now as far as UV mapping go, uh, or UV unwrapping this model goes, I'm just going to put it into side view. So I'm going to select these two. E, mark seams. So now I've got seams marked along the edge. Press A to select all. Press U to unwrap. I'm going to change the margin to 0 0.06. And I'm going to leave it as angle based. I'm going to go into the UV editor. And I can see here that, um, you know, it's it's unwrapped them pretty nicely. And, uh, and uh, except that their, you know, orientation's a little off. So I'm going to press a to deselect all, and I'm going to hover my mouse over here and press L. I'm going to rotate negative 90. I'm going to press A to select all. I'm going to press Control P to pack. I'm going to press R negative 90 again to rotate them so they're both facing up. I'm going to press G to grab Y to move on the Y axis and drop them there. I'm going to press Control P again. Oops, actually, undo. What I'm going to do first is switch this tear a new window there, and so I can see this operator panel. Control P to pack, but this time I'm going to uncheck the rotate. So now um, they're, they stayed in the orientation that I'd rotated them, but it's packed them without rotating them and kept the same margin. So they should have a little bit of a bleed on each side. So that's about as good as we're going to get with this packing. And uh, that's about it. So now we've got this UV unwrapped. And, uh, you know, you can use your, uh, you know, the different tools and stuff for editing, um, uh, you know, and the, the modifiers um, to make this fit and to fit to your standard sizes and rig it and texture it and do all that fun stuff that you can learn about at the Ditko University in World. Um, again, uh, I do recommend that uh, you uh, visit the website or join the group in world to stay tuned for classes uh, and learn about all the cool things you can do um, when creating uh, content for Second Life. Thank you and have a nice day.